Hello, this is Stefan Marek from Conductor. And we are finally in the section to start Apache Kafka and Conductor. And the first method to start Kafka is going to start one Kafka broker and one zookeeper. And we will do this using the Kafka binaries directly from the Kafka website. So the target setup is to have a Kafka cluster of one broker and it will be connected to Zookeeper and we will have to launch Zookeeper first. So later in this course, we will do a multiple broker setup and a full stack using the schema registry. But we wish, just want to start simple right now to learn about the basics of Kafka. So we'll download the Kafka binaries. We'll ensure that the Java JDK is installed. We'll add the Kafka binaries to the path of our machine. And then we will start Zookeeper and we will start Kafka and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and tap Apache Kafka download. And this is going to take us to the website for Apache Kafka. So right now I'm on version 2.7.0. It's possible you'll see 2.8.0 because it's going to be released very soon. And it's very possible you see 3.x.0. And if the current method doesn't work right now, I will make sure to update it when Kafka 3.x is going to be uh, out. So don't worry if you don't see the same version as me. Obviously, Kafka is evolving, but this course should remain very, 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 very relevant. Okay. So you want to download Kafka, so you need to download the binary. So click on, uh, for example, 270 Scala 213. It doesn't really matter if you take 212 or 213, but here it says that 213 is recommended. So in this case, we're just going to use the binary download, not the source download, the binary download of Scala 2.13 for version 270. So we are going to a Apache website to download, and the download is now getting started. The other thing you have to do is to download Java. So if you go into Get Started and Quick Start, uh, you will see the instructions to get started with Kafka. And so for it to work, you need to have the local environment must have Java 8 plus installed. So I'm going to just install Java 11 JDK. So I just type Java 11 JDK install on Google if you don't have Java already. And it really is up to you to check uh, whether or not you have Java 8 already installed on your laptop. And please make sure to, um, to check the quick start in the future. Maybe they will increase the Java version you need to have on your computer. And I will leave you to it to check whether or not this is true. So this takes me to the Oracle website where I can get Java SE Development Kit 11 downloads. And I'm going to just scroll down and I found the development kit. So Please choose a platform that is relevant to you. If you have Linux, there's probably a better way to install Java. If you have Mac as well, you can use the Mac OS installer right here. So this is the one for me that I'm going to use. If you have Windows, you have the Windows X64 installer right here that you can click on to download Java. So once you click on the installer itself, oh, you need to click on it, not do it in, and then you accept the license. And then you would go ahead and download the JDK 11, for example, is the one I would recommend right now. Okay. So you may have to uh, sign up onto Oracle to make this work. So next, after you've downloaded Kafka and you unzip it, so untar it. So for this on Windows, you need to use Win, uh, Rinwar. Um, if you have Mac or Linux, you can use the tar command to get into the Kafka directory. And so now here I go, my Kafka is downloaded, it is extracted. And if I look at the files within my Kafka directory, as we can see, there's bin, config, libs, and site doc. So this is everything we need to get started with Kafka. Next, so we have ensured that Java is installed. And for me, I can check it by doing Java minus version. And it shows me that I have Java 11 installed on my machine already. OK, so next we need to start Zookeeper first, and then we will need to start Apache Kafka. So I'm going to make two terminals. It's just a feature of my terminal on Mac uh, that I can divide it into multiple terminals. This is called um, iTerm2. Uh, but if you have just a Windows terminal or the Linux terminal or just a normal command line, uh, again, you can just open two windows to just do what I did. Very, very simple. Okay, so we need to uh, start Zookeeper. And so for this on uh, Mac, uh, Linux, you're going to have to run the zookeeper start.sh command, and then you pass in the zookeeper config. So this is a command you have to run from the root folder of Apache Kafka, and then you pass in bin slash zookeeper server start.sh, and then the config zookeeper.properties, and then you press enter. If you are on Windows, you would use the same command, but this time you would do bin slash windows slash zookeeper server start dot bat. And this is for Windows users that are using a traditional Windows uh, command line. And then the config property is remaining the same for your Windows machine. Okay. If you have trouble for Windows, uh, please make sure to Google how to start Kafka on Windows. 
because uh, I know Windows can be a little bit more complicated, okay? And you will find some websites that take you through how to run Kafka on Windows. So for example, this blog from Confluence probably is a good way to get started, okay? So let's go back to my Linux Windows, so my Mac Windows, so I'm going to copy this command, press Enter, and Zookeeper is getting started. So if everything looks good, the log looks like this, there's a lot of info that will show up. And then one thing that makes you believe that Zookeeper has started correctly is that it says info binding to ports, and then there is this URL 2181. So if you see 2181, that means that Zookeeper is started and that it is started correctly. Okay, so you have to leave this window running, and this is why I have a second window in here to start Kafka. If you want to get out of this window, you press Control C, and this will stop Zookeeper. But if you do so, uh, you just know that Kafka will stop working. So you need to have Zookeeper running no matter what. Okay. So next, we open another terminal session, and then we run the same command. So uh, for Kafka, a similar command, sorry. So Kafka server start.sh, and then we pass in config slash server.property. So this is a different configuration file for Kafka. And obviously, if you're on Windows, you can adapt this command just like I showed you. So I will press Enter, and Kafka is getting started. So there's going to be a lot of log happening in the bottom and on the top of my screen. But you know that things have been working when you see Kafka server ID equals zero has started. And so that means that our Kafka broker is successfully started and we are done with installing and started Kafka on our machine. So that's it for our lecture. I will see you in the next lecture for another method on how to start Kafka.